Many viruses that cause a common cold, including four other types of coronaviruses, they actually behave differently from the SARS-CoV-2 virus that we're dealing with in the world right now. Also, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is not the same as the flu virus. It's important to know that. So what exactly does this virus do once it's in your body and how is it killing people exactly? Welcome back guys to another episode. My name is Leroy Kenton and this video is a very important one because I take you through step by step on how this virus is actually taking people's lives. It's definitely not something to play with so make sure you watch this video until the end. That way you're educated and share it with somebody so that they're caught up and learn exactly how this virus actually works once it's inside of you. It definitely changed my whole perspective when I did research on how the virus works and I'm gonna do my best to explain this as simply as possible so if it feels like I'm dumbing it down a little too much that's actually intended I want as many people out there to understand this all right so the first thing this virus does of course it enters in your body now the SARS-CoV-2 virus gets into your respiratory tract when you breathe in respiratory droplets that have the virus or if you smear the virus on your face with your fingers, contaminated fingers or another contaminated object. We're always touching our face, rubbing our eyes and all of that. Now the infection begins, it tends to start in your nose. And of course this is the system that you breathe through from your nose, mouth to your lungs allowing you to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Next thing that this virus does is that it looks for a cell to invade. Now you see the spikes on this virus, if you take a look, on the surface of the virus, it consists of protein. And now these protein spikes are the key to the virus finding a cell to invade in your respiratory tract. And these spikes help the virus find and bind to ACE2, which is a protein on the surface of the cells in your body that allows the virus to get into your cells. So these things operate pretty smart. They know how to feel around and get into your cells to cause some havoc. But when they find a cell to invade, yep, they invade that cell. Now the virus then, it tricks your cell into helping it get inside of it. It uses an enzyme called furin that's present in your cells to break down these protein spikes in half and it allows the spikes to then guide the virus into your cells. Your body is completely oblivious to this. This virus is a trickster, it's a burglar. Now before your body's natural security kicks in, this virus, once it hijacks your cells, machinery literally takes over your cell to reproduce copies of itself. And from there, it doesn't just invade one cell, but it starts to invade other cells. So the virus makes more and more and more duplicates of itself and they may invade additional cell lining in your respiratory tract and begin to cause a lot of damage. And here's the thing though, is that this may go on for a little while because your immune system, you know, your natural security system of your body, it has never seen anything like the SARS-CoV-2 virus before. So it might take a little while before your body even realizes that something is off. And so of course, like your immune system does, like it's designed to do, it then scrambles to deal with this emergency. But the thing is with your immune system, since this virus is so new, it doesn't have a specific plan of how to treat this thing and get rid of it out of your body. So while your immune system is scrambling to deal with this with no clear plan, symptoms start to pop up in people. And it's estimated that about 18% of those who are infected end up having no symptoms throughout their infection period. However, there are people who suffer from upper respiratory symptoms, and those are fever, sore throat, nasal congestion, as well as dry cough. But now to take this even further now, inflammation in the bronchial tree begins. And this is when the infection proceeds down your respiratory tract into your lung tree and lungs. And that's when things get real messy because people suffer from shortness of breath, chest pains or tightness in their chest, as well as deeper coughing and other breathing difficulties. And these symptoms can come from inflammation of your respiratory tree, AKA your bronchial tree. And these, by the way, are the set of pipes that carry the air that you breathe in and out of your lungs. At the end of your respiratory tract, there's a whole lot of different balloon-like structures, and these are called alveoli. And these structures are the things that fill with the air that you inhale. Now, taking it a little bit further now, your body begins to starve for oxygen. The alveoli serve to exchange oxygen from the air that you breathe in, in exchange with the carbon dioxide in your blood. So you breathe in, oxygen, 
exhale carbon dioxide. But the carbon dioxide goes into the alveoli where it may be exhaled up through your respiratory tract and out through your nose and mouth. So when this exchange happens with oxygen carbon dioxide, the blood that is now newly infused with oxygen, it travels throughout the rest of your body to provide all the cells with the oxygen that they need. But when your alveoli doesn't work properly, your body can become starved of oxygen and unable to get rid of carbon dioxide. So literally, it could feel like you're drowning. And from Whoa. there, this develops into pneumonia. So if this virus and the results of your immune system trying to battle everything, when that gets a little too much, it becomes pneumonia. Pneumonia is when your alveoli become inflamed and get filled up with fluid, that drowning feeling that I was talking about, literally your body starts to drown. Your immune system can continue to battle the virus so, but it can also be overactive. And this is an important part because it can cause things to get worse. This is your immune system, by the way. Your immune system can end up quickly sending more and more troops to the area to try to battle this virus. It cascades different cells and chemicals throughout your body. But the thing is, they end up firing all over the place in random directions. Like I mentioned, your body has not seen the SARS-CoV-2 virus before. So it's going in blind. It's gotta take time to learn exactly what this thing is. Kind of like the medical professionals now who are trying to treat this virus. They're going in blind they're doing a lot of different tests and with that sometimes damage and other side effects happen in the process so in similar fashion that's what your body's immune system is doing and there may be other side effects and damages happening in your body so on top of other parts of your body being damaged as well here we have the coronavirus still doing what it's doing to your body. And then not just that, while your immune system is trying to figure out what to do, the coronavirus is also taking over your respiratory system. Other bacteria can come in as well and then start causing havoc because your immune system is taken up trying to fight off this new virus invasion. Not to mention battling off other things that you are not even aware of that your body's doing for you. Yeah, it's actually pretty mind blowing how our bodies are set up and what they actually do. But that's besides the point the final step is ARDS. So as damage to your lungs continues, you may develop acute respiratory distress syndrome and that's ARDS. Now this is when your lungs have suffered so much widespread damage that you start running out of functioning alveoli to do the gas exchange work. Breathing in oxygen, exhaling carbon dioxide, and the damage gets to a point that your lungs can no longer effectively exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. So you go into respiratory failure and you need a ventilator to help you to start breathe. Now the real trouble starts happening when your immune system starts to send chemicals and cells to not only your lungs, but other parts of your body, like I mentioned before. And this destruction then extends beyond your respiratory tract. The Centers of Disease Control or the CDC describes this as the body's extreme response to an infection. It is a life-threatening medical emergency. Your blood pressure starts to drop, your organs start to fail, and this is possibly the point of no return for somebody suffering from COVID-19. All right guys, so that was a look at 10 steps on how the coronavirus is actually killing people. It's definitely even more fatal for those people who have respiratory conditions already. So do what you gotta do guys. Don't dismiss this just as a flu or a cold. Maybe your immune system can handle it, but there's other people out there with respiratory illnesses as well as people whose immune system aren't that strong. So do what you gotta do, stay home as much as possible, only go out if you must. Take all the precautions necessary. And if you found this episode very useful and it helped you understand a little bit more about how this SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus operates, definitely share it with people, share it with your family, share it with your friends so that they get educated as well. Other than that, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below in the video description section. Join in on the conversation, it's a very important one. And I'm gonna get out of here. I'll leave you with a recommended video at the end screen. See you guys next time.